What three baits do I think you should be using in the month of May? That's what we're going to talk about right now. So if you like this kind of content, please hit that subscribe button. Become part of the team family. I really do appreciate it. Well, we're going to break down the upper, middle, and the southern area of the country. We're going to give you, there's a little bit of a difference in the upper, middle, and the southern, but this is a really amazing time to fish. Why? Because the fish are in three phases, three different phases. If you're way up north, you're probably seeing some pre-spawn fishing. If you're in the middle of the country, you're seeing spawning fish. You're seeing fish on beds. And down here in the south, you're probably seeing, well, you know, you're seeing post-spawn fish. But May is the time of the month when there's transition fishing throughout the country. And those fish are targeting almost the same thing all the way through. Up north, you're looking at areas that are finally, you're finally seeing some warmer days, some warmer water. Hopefully you're able to get out there and go fishing a little bit more. You're seeing smallmouth fishing. You're gonna be able to use smaller baits, all that stuff. Still a little bit colder water, but you can use colder water baits and some other baits. In the middle of the country, you're seeing a shad spawn. You're seeing the blueback herring starting to spawn, and that's a great time. So we're going to target those fish, those forage fish, so that you can catch more fish when you're out there bass fishing. And down here, we're finally seeing fish move off the shallows and into some deeper water. They want to look for structure or docks or ledges or shell beds. They're looking for that down here. Grass is really important this time of year. You can find grass, you're gonna find fish on the edges because the forage fish will use that as a uh, place to hide and those bass are gonna sit in there and ambush them. The one thing I will tell you in May that you need to do more than anything is you need to cover water, especially in the southern and the middle of the country. If you're not catching fish in one area, move off that area. Doesn't mean they're not fish there, but those fish are probably following a pattern that's going on with forage fish. So if you're sit stuck in one place and just it's dry, move on, get that trolling motor working, start using something a little bit different, start making a little bit more noise, do all those little things. As these water temperatures start to get a little warmer, you're gonna see bass moving a lot more. They're not gonna stay lethargic. They will go after your bait from a little bit of a distance now too, as that water warms up. But also you have to remember that sound travels further in warmer water. So we need to use these little things to our advantage so that we can catch more fish. In the Southern and uh, in the middle of the country, you need to target rock piles. You need to target stumps and lay downs and structure and boat docks and all of it. You need to key in on those areas. Those areas are gonna hold fish to so that they can ambush other fish. They also will sit there so they can get some shade too. That rock pile or that underwater structure will hold bass to just chill there so they're not getting beat up by the sun. It also gives them a place where they can hide. They're not only hiding from the sun, but they're hiding from the fish that they want to eat. So if you have those areas or those that structure, find it and target it and fish it. So in the upper, upper and the middle are gonna be somewhat somewhat the same. Not really, but they are. They, they have two baits that are the same. In the upper, my first bait I think you should use is a spinner bait. And yes, I had to look down at my notes. A spinner bait's a great bait to use in upper and in middle right now, because that's gonna be one of them in the middle, because of the shad spawn. They give off a vibration, they give off a flash. They can be skipped and punched, or not really punched, but they can be skipped into areas and you can get them back into that deep stuff. And when they hit, that vibration triggers the lateral line on the fish and they'll go after it. Just recently at the Bassmaster Elites, that spinner bait was key for a lot of anglers fishing shallow. So spinner baits, number one for upper and the middle. My second bait for up north is a jerk bait. Not a suspending jerk bait, but a jerk bait. One that you can make a cast and just reel it in. Now you're targeting shad, something that's shadish, something that's two or three, four inches long at the most. You still have a little bit of colder water and that jerk bait is really great in cooler water. But make that cast and just reel it in. Real, not slow, but just reel it in. Get it to that depth that you want it to be. You don't want to finish it up high. You want to fit it, fish it in that middle water column, something that's whatever. If it's 12 feet deep, fish one that's dive six feet. It's gonna be successful for you because bass are looking up and looking down and looking everywhere to eat as much as possible. So my second bait is a jerk bait. My third bait for up north kinda is somewhat like a spinner bait, but really isn't. I think you should be using 
a chatterbait. I think a chatterbait is perfect all throughout the country right now. I think if you put the right trailer on it, that gives it a little bit more bulk and action, you can't beat it. You can skip it under docks and that vibration and the sound that a chatterbait makes, a good quality chatterbait, let me just say that, is really important right now. These bass will target that just on the sight and sound alone. So my third bait is a chatterbait and make it a good one. Don't get a cheap one. There's certain ones that just stink. Honestly, I try not to put out too many brand names in these videos, but in this one case, I think you need to either use a jackhammer or the original Z-Man or a Mini Max. Do not buy one of those cheap chatterbaits off Amazon. They don't work. They might look like they work. They don't work. Spend the extra bucks and get a quality chatterbait. You will not regret it. So in the middle, we said spinnerbait. In the middle of the country, we said spinnerbait. So my second bait for, now in the middle of the country, we said spinnerbait to start off with. My second bait I think you should use is a crankbait, some sort of middle diving crankbait, something that can get in the water, have good action, and be in that two, two and a half, three inch range. Don't get giant crankbaits. That's not what they're looking or not what they're seeing right now. You can just make that cast. And again, like the jerk bait up in the north, you can just cast it and reel it in. Just don't burn it, burn it, but reel it in at a good tempo. You'll notice that those bass are targeting those fish or that kind of fish because that's what they're seeing out there. So my second bait is a crankbait. My third bait's a chatterbait. I just said it. I don't think you can do anything wrong with a chatterbait in the middle of the country. They're looking for bluegill. They're looking for all th this kind of stuff. A chatterbait's perfect. And if you're in the southern states, I think the first one you should be using is some sort of swim bait. Now you can use a bigger swim bait right now because it'll a glide bait or anything like that. A big swim bait is going to work. It'll target the fish that you want, those big giant fish that you want to catch. And it looks like big shad that are moving through, that have spawned and so forth. So my number one bait for down south is a swim bait. My second Second bait is a topwater frog. We're having right now is when you're going to start seeing frogs spawning or frogs having babies because you're going to start seeing those schools of frogs, babies roaming around the area. And if the babies are there, the mom and pops are there too. They will jump into the water and get bit. So my second bait is some sort of top water walking frog. Maybe not a spitting one yet, but a walking frog. And last but not least down here, my third bait is some sort of either Ned rigged or wacky rigged or Carolina or Texas rigged worm. Here's why I like this. I like to throw that bait on the very edge of grass that I find. If I see grass that is above the water and there's a grass line, I target that grass line. Just like when I have a, use a frog right now, I'm targeting certain areas that I can cast into the onto land and then bring the frog back into the water. Almost like the frog is in the, in the grass and jumping back into the water. In the terms of the worm, I wanna make that cast and let that bait just sink very slowly. Those bass are in the grass and will come out just to suck it up and eat it quickly. And those big, big bass are hiding in the grass. So something that's small, looks natural, that just crazy enough is falling out of the sky for them to eat is really successful right now. I will at times make a jump with it and make that bait go from being flat to like this and then back to this and then let it sink again. I'm using these baits not really fast, but not really slow. And I want them to do, I want the bait to do all the work. So little twitches and just pausing it and letting it sink cor correctly through that water column is very important. So my third bait is some sort of wacky Ned rigged or Texas or Carolina rigged worm. And by worm, I mean Cinco. So there's my three baits I think you should be using in the upper, middle, and the southern states. Please tell me what baits you're using in May so I can use them next year when I do another one of these videos because I really do appreciate it. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you and cheers.